life, other people's lives, the world around us. These things all make up our world and how we perceive it. And sometimes some idea or something that happens to us disrupts that natural thinking and causes you or I to have an existential crisis. This can cause us to rethink everything, change your life or the way you treat things around you. And in this video, we will get into that very idea. This will cover ideas that everyone thinks quite often to ideas that may cause you to, well, have an existential crisis. So warning if you don't like that type of content, but without further ado, let's get into the video. And actually, before we start, subscribe. And it's my goal to be at 10k before the end of the year, and I think that's a totally possible goal. So if you don't mind subscribing, it'll help me reach my goal faster. And it's free, and you can always change your mind. So anyways, now let's actually get into the video. I didn't really explain that much about the iceberg itself, but it's eight tiers long and obviously will get more complex and obscure and ideas the deeper we go down, like any other iceberg video. And actually, I didn't even really cover what an existential crisis is, but by definition, it refers to the assemble of feelings and questions we have to do with the meaning and purpose of our life. These questions aren't really easy to find the answers to, and this can leave us feeling stuck. And alright, starting off tier 1 with growing up Christian, Jewish, or Islamic. Experiencing an existential crisis while growing up in a Christian, Jewish, or Islamic context can be a profound and complex journey that involves questioning the beliefs, values, and teachings that have been an integral part of your upbringing. This internal exploration often stems from a desire to understand your place in the world, the purpose of existence, and the relationship between your faith and the broader human experience. In a Christian context, an existential crisis might manifest as doubts about the existence of God, the nature of salvation, and the meaning of suffering. Individuals might grapple with reconciling their faith in a benevolent deity with the presence of injustice and hardship in the world. This could lead to a search for deeper spiritual truths and a reevaluation of the teachings they've been exposed to. Similarly, with a Jewish framework, an existential crisis might involve questioning the covenant with God, the significance of cultural traditions, and the historical narratives that shape their identity. This could lead to reflections on the complexities of faith in a rapidly changing world and the role of religion in finding purpose amidst modern challenges. In an Islamic context, an existential crisis might encompass introspection on the pillars of faith, the purpose of the following religious obligations, and the interpretation of the Quran. Individuals might grapple with reconciling their spiritual beliefs with the diverse cultural and societal landscapes they encounter as well as the questions about their destiny and free will. These crises can be catalyzed by various factors, such as exposure to diverse perspectives, critical life events, or personal introspection. The process often involves seeking answers to life's profound questions while maintaining a connection to one's faith. Engaging in open dialogues with the religious leaders, mentors, and peers, and reading philosophical and spiritual literature can provide valuable insights and perspectives. Being atheistic. Experiencing an existential crisis as an atheist can involve confronting profound questions about the nature of existence, meaning, morality, and purpose in a universe that is understood to be devoid of supernatural entities. This internal exploration can lead to a range of thoughts and emotions as individuals grapple with the absence of traditional religious frameworks. Without the belief in a divine plan or afterlife, Atheists might question the origin of their moral values and ethical principles. They may wonder how to derive a sense of purpose and meaning from a universe that appears indifferent to the human existence. These uncertainties can lead to feelings of isolation, nihilism, and a search for alternative sources of fulfillment. Navigating an atheistic existential crisis often involves learning to philosophy, science, art, and human connections to find answers. Some atheists find solace in the interconnected of life on earth, the marvels of the natural world, and the beauty of human achievements. The pursuit of knowledge, personal growth, and contributing positively to society can become sources of motivation. Having personal struggles. 
Personal struggles can often trigger existential crises, moments when individuals deeply question the meaning and purpose of their lives. These crises can emerge from a range of challenges such as career setbacks, relationship difficulties, health issues, or feelings of isolation. When confronted with these struggles, individuals may find themselves questioning their identity, the significance of their accomplishments, and whether their efforts are ultimately worthwhile. These introspective moments can lead to feelings of uncertainty, anxiety, and a sense of being adrift in a vast and sometimes indifferent universe. However, they can also serve as a catalyst for growth and self-discovery, prompting individuals to reevaluate their lives and values seek new sources of meaning, and forge a deeper understanding of themselves. Engaging in introspection, seeking support from friends and professionals, and exploring philosophical and spiritual insights are common strategies for navigating the complex terrain of an existential crisis triggered for personal struggles. Through this process, individuals can emerge with a clear sense of purpose and a renewed appreciation for the journey of life. Having Financial Struggles Facing financial struggles can lead often to an existential crisis, a time when individuals grapple with profound questions about their worth, purpose, and place in the world. As financial difficulties impact various aspects of their life, individuals may experience heightened stress, anxiety, and a sense of powerlessness. Questions about the meaning of success, the role of material wealth, and the fairness of life's challenges can come to the forefront. During these moments, individuals might find themselves questioning whether their financial setbacks define their value as human beings. The pressure to meet basic needs and societal expectations can weigh heavily on oneself. However, an existential crisis triggered by financial struggles can also serve as an opportunity for reflection and growth. Exploring personal values beyond material wealth, seeking emotional support from friends and family, and identifying alternative sources of happiness can be essential steps in navigating such a crisis. Engaging in practical strategies to address financial issues, seeking professional advice, and exploring new opportunities for personal and professional development can also provide a sense of empowerment. And that just finished up Tier 1. Most of them are depressing, and most of this iceberg will be relatively depressing, but personally, I find this iceberg very interesting, so I hope you do as well. And I'm not a therapist in any way, shape, or form, but I tried to give some insight on every one of these to possibly help you or someone you know that's going through something like this, or you're just like me and just kind of found these ideas interesting. And the deeper we go down, it gets a lot better and more interesting. And some of the ideas are kind of crazy and make you think a little bit. So just make sure to watch the end because it just gets better and better. All right, now on to tier two. Are you enough? Experiencing an existential crisis might involve questioning whether external resources, including technology or even relationships, are enough to provide a sense of meaning and fulfillment. In a world characterized by constant connectivity and technological advancements, individuals might find themselves grappling with whether reliance on external factors of validation, entertainment, or connection truly satisfies their deeper emotional and existential needs. The concept of enoughness is an existential crisis that extends beyond material possessions and can encompass the quest for purpose, self-worth, and authentic fulfillment. People might question whether their achievements, relationships, or possessions are truly meaningful or if they just merely serve as distractions from confronting deeper existential concerns. An existential crisis encourages introspection and self-discovery, prompting individuals to explore their values, passions, and the activities that resonate with their true selves. It's an opportunity to reevaluate what truly matters. Unexplained Mysterious Events Experiencing an existential crisis triggered by encounters with unexplained mysterious events can be deeply transformative and multifaceted experience. When confronted with phenomena that challenges the boundaries of our understanding and rational explanations, individuals often find themselves at a crossroads between what they know and what remains unknown. Unexplained mysterious events have the power to unsettle established beliefs, provoke contemplation, and foster a profound sense of curiosity. In these moments, the veil of familiarity that shrouds the everyday world can be lifted, exposing the enigmatic and unencharted aspects of existence. 
This exposure can lead to a cascade of questions that ripple through one's psyche, touching upon fundamental inquiries about the nature of reality, the limits of human cognition, and the place of humanity in the cosmos. Encountering the unexplained can evoke feelings of both humility and vulnerability. The realization that there are phenomena beyond current scientific understanding can highlight the ever-present gaps in our knowledge and ignite a yearning for greater insight. This, in turn, can spark an existential crisis as individuals grapple with their own limitations and the vastness of what remains to be discovered. Navigating an existential crisis prompted by unexplained events often include a search for meaning and an exploration of alternative perspectives. Some individuals might delve into scientific research, seeking to uncover plausible explanations that align with the known laws of the universe. Others might turn to philosophy, delving into metaphysical inquiries about the nature of reality, consciousness, and the possibility of parallel dimensions. Additionally, seeking connection with others who have shared similar experiences can provide a sense of validation and space for open discourse. Engaging in conversations with peers, reading accounts of other people's encounters, and participating in an online or local communities dedicated to exploring the unexplained can offer a supportive environment for grappling with the complexities of these events. Ultimately, an existential crisis provoked by unexplained mysteries can be an opportunity for personal growth once again. Exploiting one's intellectual horizons and cultivating a deeper appreciation for the intricate tapestry of existence. Humans can't imagine dimensions of the universe. Experiencing an existential crisis related to the limitations of human imagination in comprehending the dimensions of the universe is a profound complication that raises questions about the scope of human knowledge and the nature of reality. When considering the vastness and complexity of the universe, individuals might confront feelings of insignificance and humility in the face of the unknown. The concept of dimensions beyond this readily perspective challenges the boundaries of human cognition and highlights the limitations of our sensory experiences. Attempting to contextualize higher dimensions or the intricacies of space and time and evoke a sense of frustration and existential unease, as it becomes apparent that our minds are confined to interpreting a reality that may expand far past our own intuitive grasp. And I personally think about this subject all the time. If universe even has dimensions, or it's forever infinite, and there's infinite planets and infinite humans out past our scope of view, which is just kind of crazy. And actually, my next video is going to be kind of on that. So get prepared for kind of aliens and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. And this crisis can prompt individuals to ponder the nature of existence itself and the potential layers of reality that remain inaccessible to human perception. The questions raised, whether about the existence of parallel universes, extra dimensionals, and alternate realities, can inspire wonder and curiosity, but they can also elect feelings of isolation and yearning for a more comprehensive understanding. Over 90% of the oceans are undiscovered. The realization that over 90% of Earth's oceans remain unexplored can indeed trigger an existential crisis, promoting individuals to confront the vastness of unknown and the limitations of human knowledge. The oceans, which cover a significant portion of our planet, have depths and regions that have yet to be fully explored and understood. Con contemplating the enormity of our uncharted oceanic territory can lead to feelings of awe, curiosity, and a sense of humility in the face of the mysteries that lie beneath the waves. The fact that there are ecosystems, species, and phenomena lurking in the depths that remain beyond our current understanding can invoke a profound sense of wonder and existential questioning. An existential crisis prompted by the unexplored oceans can prompt individuals to reflect on the broader context of human existence. Questions about the significance of our individual lives within the grand scope of the planet's mysteries may arise. People might also contemplate the interconnectedness of all life on Earth and the responsibility to protect and preserve our planet's delicate ecosystems. Exploring the uncharted territories of the oceans, both literally and metaphorically, can offer a metaphor for the journey of self-discovery in the pursuit of knowledge. The stars you see are long gone. 
contemplating the phenomenon that the light from stars we observe might have originated from long ago, and those stars might no longer exist, can indeed lead to an existential crisis. This realization opens up a realm of thought about the nature of time, the impermanence of our universe, and our perception of reality. The concept that light we perceive from distant stars is essentially a glimpse into the past highlights the limitations of our human perception and the vastness of the cosmos. This can evoke feelings of awe and insignificance as we grapple with the idea that our universe's timeline extends far beyond our comprehension. An existential crisis stemming from this notion may lead individuals to question the nature of existence itself. The complication of stars that have lived and died while their light still reaches us prompts reflections on the imperatives of all things and the transitory nature of life. Navigating this existential crisis often involves a balance between confronting the vastness of the cosmos and finding meaning in the present moment. Engaging with astronomy, cosmetology, and philosophical discussions can provide avenues for exploring these thoughts further. Alright, now on to Tier 3, Suffering from Derealization or Depersonalization. Experiencing an existential crisis due to derealization and depersonalization can be an intense and disorienting journey. Derealization involves feeling disconnected from one's surroundings, as if the world is unreal or dreamlike. Depersonalization, on the other hand, entails feelings detached from oneself as if observing one's actions from a distance. These experiences can lead to profound existential questioning as individuals grapple with the nature of reality, identity, and their place in the world. The sensation of detachment from one's self and the surroundings can invoke feelings of unreality, isolation, and even anxiety. During this crisis, individuals might find themselves questioning the authenticity of their experiences and the stability of their sense of self. The familiarity of the world might erode, leaving them feeling untethered and uncertain. This very nature of existence, perception, and consciousness can become sources of confusion and turmoil. Coping with an existential crisis brought on by derealization and depersonalization often involves seeking professional help from therapists or mental health experts who can provide guidance and coping strategies. Engaging in grounding exercises, mindfulness practices, and maintaining connections with loved ones can also offer support during these challenging times. Psychedelic Drug Experiences Experiencing an existential crisis as a result of psychedelic drug experiences is a complex and often profound phenomenon. Psychedelics have the potential to induce altered states of consciousness that can lead individuals to question the nature of reality, perception, and their place in the universe. During a psychedelic experience, individuals might encounter intense visuals and sensory perceptions, dissolve boundaries between themselves and their surroundings, and experience a profound sense of interconnectedness. These experiences can lead to feelings of awe, wonder, and a deep exploration of existential questions. An existential crisis stemming from psychedelic experiences can involve contemplating the nature of consciousness, the interconnectedness of all things, and the limitations of human perception. Individuals might confront the fragility and their sense of self and grapple with the idea that reality can be subjective and malleable. Navigating this type of crisis often involves interrogating the insights gained from the psychedelic experience into one's everyday life, reflecting on the profound realizations and confronting the existential questions raised can lead to personal growth and transformation. However, it's essential to approach all of these experiences with caution and seek guidance if needed, as they can also be emotionally intense and potentially challenging to process. Being born in the wrong body. Experiencing an existential crisis related to being born in the wrong body often refers to gender dysphoria, a condition where an individual's gender identity doesn't align with their gender they are assigned at at birth. This can lead to profound internal conflict, triggering questions about identity, authenticity, and one's place in society. Gender dysphoria can lead to feelings of distress, alienation, and a deep desire to reconcile one's internal sense of self with their external appearance. This crisis involves navigating societal expectations, cultural norms, and personal authenticity. Many individuals experience intense emotional turmoil as they strive to align their inner identity with their external presentation. 
An existential crisis triggered by being born in the wrong body might involve profound questioning of the concept of self. Individuals might grapple with whether their true identity lies in their physical appearance, their social roles, or their internal sense of gender. This introspection often leads to questions about societal constructs and the ways in which they can shape personal identity. Growing up in cults or sects. Growing up in cults or sects can have a profound and lasting impact on the individual's psychologically, emotionally, or existential development. Children raised within such closed, controlling environments often experience a unique set of challenges that can lead to an existential crisis later in life. One of these defining features of cults and sects is the isolation they impose on their members. This isolation can limit exposure to outside perspectives, leading to a narrow worldview and a lack of critical thinking skills. As these individuals grow older and encounter different beliefs and ideas, they may begin to question the very foundation of their reality. This questioning can trigger an existential crisis as they grapple with the stark contrast between the beliefs they were raised with and the diversity of thought present in the wider world. Furthermore, the strict doctrines and manipulation that often characterizes cults can leave a lasting imprint on a person's psyche. These doctrines can shape one's self-identity and understand of reality, making it difficult to differentiate between personal beliefs and those imposed by the cult. Upon leaving such an environment, individuals may face a crisis of identity as they struggle to define their own values and beliefs apart from the influence of the cult. The process of overcoming an existential crisis stemming from a cult upbringing involves a deep journey of self-discovery and introspection. Individuals might confront the fundamental questions about their existence, purpose, and beliefs. This journey can be both liberating and challenging as it requires untangling the web of indoctrination and embracing uncertainty. Re-establishing connections with the outside world and forming new relationships can be a daunting task for those who grow up in cults. The sense of belonging they felt with the cult may have an intense and all-encompassing, make it a difficult to adapt to a more open and diverse social environment. This struggle to find a new sense of belonging can exacerbate their existential crisis as individuals grasp with feelings of isolation and alienation. Three to four people died while I read this. And simple as that, three to four people statistically died while I read that sentence and as you watched it. No matter what time you watch this or in the future you watch it, people are currently dying while I talk about this. And not to be too morbid, but it's definitely depressing and could, of course, possibly cause an existential crisis. Humans wiped out 60% of all animals in the last 50 years. The realization that humans have caused a significant decline in animal populations, amounting to about 60% reduction over just the past 50 years, can indeed evoke a profound existential crisis. This crisis arises from the recognition of humanity's role in altering the very fabric of the natural world. Contemplating this statistic can lead to a series of existential questions. What does it mean for our relationship with the planet? How has our actions affected the delicate balance of our ecosystems? Are we just disconnected from the consequences of our behavior? Such introspection may promote individuals to reevaluate their sense of purpose, values, and the broader human impact on Earth. The existential crisis may extend to pondering the fragility of life and the interconnectedness of all living beings. It forces us to confront our responsibility as stewards of the planet and raises concerns about the legacy we are leaving for future generations. This crisis could propel us towards introspection about the ethical implications of our actions, our place within the larger web of life, and the need for transformative change. What's after death? The question of what happens after death is a classic trigger for existential crises. Contemplating the unknown nature of what comes after life can lead to a profound introspection about the meaning and purpose of our existence. This existential crisis may involve grappling with questions like, what is the purpose of life and what ultimately ends in death? Does life hold inherent meaning if there is no certainty about an afterlife? How do our beliefs about the afterlife shape our actions and choices in the present? Individuals facing this crisis often explore various philosophical, religious, and spiritual perspectives in an attempt to find answers or comfort. Some may struggle with the idea of morality and their impotence of experience, while others might find solace in concepts of the afterlife, reincarnation, or the continuation of energy in some form. 
Aging is basically dying from the moment you are born. The concept that aging represents a continuous process of moving closer to death and from the moment we are born can indeed trigger an existential crisis. This perspective forces us to confront the inevitability of our own morality and the passage of time. Contemplating aging as a gradual journey towards death raises existential questions such as how should we approach life knowing that it is finite? Does the awareness of our morality influence the choices we make in the way we live? And how do we find meaning and purpose in the face of an unexplorable progression? This crisis compels individuals to reflect on the fleeting nature of existence and the significance of the moments in between birth and death. It may lead to a deep exploration on how to make the most of the time we have, fostering a greater appreciation for the present and encouraging us to prioritize experiences and relationships over material pursuits. One of my favorites on the entire iceberg, and it is, do things really happen when no one sees them? The intriguing inquiry into whether events truly occur when no one is present to witness them delves into the realms of philosophy, epistemology, and even the fundamental nature of reality. This long-standing question has sparked discussions among thinkers and scholars for centuries, prompting contemplation about the role of observation in shaping our understanding of the world around us. At the heart of the question is a tension between realism and idealism. Realists argue that events and phenomena exist independently of human perception. According to this viewpoint, the universe operates based on a set of physical laws and processes that unfold irrespective of whether they are conscious of observers present. From this perspective, the moon continues to orbit the earth, stars continue to shine, and natural processes continue to occur, even in the absence of sentient beings to witness them. Conversely, idealists propose that nature of reality is intimately tied to perception and consciousness. This perspective suggests that events and phenomena only come into existence when they are perceived or observed by conscious beings. In this view, reality is constructed through our perceptions, and the act of observation plays a fundamental role in shaping the world we experience. A notable example from this realm of science that contributes to this discussion is quantum physics. Quantum theory introduces the concept that particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously until they are observed, at which point they collapse into a single state. This phenomenon challenges classic notions of objectivity and raises intriguing questions about the interplay between observation and the fundamental nature of reality. The answer to this question isn't straightforward at all and often depends on one's philosophical stance, worldview, and interpretation of scientific principles. It invites contemplation about the nature of knowledge and the limitations of human perception and the elusive boundary between the objective world and our subjective experience of it. Exploring whether events truly even occur in the absence of our observation leads us down a philosophical rabbit hole that touches on the very foundations of our understanding of existence. While definitive answers may remain elusive, the exploration of this question encourages us to critically examine our assumptions about the nature of reality, the role of our perception, and the interconnectedness between the observed and the unreserved. All right, now on to tier five, and global warming won't stop in time. Global warming stands as a pressing issue that has far-reaching implications for our planet's ecosystems, weather patterns, and human societies. The urgency of this situation cannot be overstated, as the effects of climate change are becoming increasingly evident in the form of rising global temperatures, melting ice caps, more frequent and severe natural disasters, and disruptions to ecosystems. It's true that we are facing a challenging timeline to address this existential crisis. However, it's crucial to recognize the significant steps could be taken to mitigate its impacts. While it might be difficult to completely halt global warming at all, concentrated efforts at various levels can help slow down its progression and minimize the potential consequences. Governments around the world need to take the lead to implementing policies and regulations that promote substantial practices reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and encourage the adoption of renewable energy sources. This involves investing in clean technologies, incentivizing industries to take away from fossil fuels, and promoting energy efficiency in various sectors. Furthermore, individuals can contribute by adopting more sustainable lifestyles, reducing their carbon footprint, and supporting businesses and practices that prioritize environmental responsibility. Changes in consumption habits, transportation choices, and energy 
can all be used collectively have a significant impact on reducing emissions. And personally, I'm not sure where I stand, but that's just most of what I found on the web and on the internet saying that it actually could be stopped, but this internet iceberg thing says it's too late. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are we too late to stop global warming, or is there still a chance for us to save it? People kill and torture animals while you read this. And it's similar to the last one, but it's just as simple as that. And people are doing horrible things to animals and people like all over right now the world while you're watching this. And so another pretty morbid topic. Is it better to die before or after your loved ones? Another pretty interesting question that always makes me think. Is it better to die before or after your loved ones? Tier 6. Choosing knowing how you die versus when you die. Another would you rather question that could lead down your own rabbit hole. Let me know in the comments how you, know how you die or when you die. Morbid topic, depressing topic, I know, but interesting. Is every human really equal? The question of whether every human is truly equal is a thought-provoking and multifaceted topic that has been debated for centuries. At the heart of this debate lies the tension between the inherent worth and dignity of each individual and the actions that may have committed that challenge these principles. On one hand, the idea of equality suggests that every human being possesses fundamental rights, regardless of their backgrounds, actions, or beliefs. This perspective emphasizes the intrinsic human value of life and the importance of treating all individuals with respect and fairness, and it serves as a foundation for concepts like human rights, social justice, and inclusivity, which guide many societal norms and legal frameworks. However, really complicates this notion. When considering individuals who have committed heinous crimes such as murder or pedophilia, the concept of equality can become unsettling. How can society reconcile the idea of equal worth with the reprehensible actions of some individuals? This is where the ethical and moral dimensions of the question come into play. One viewpoint acknowledges that every human individual may have equal inherent worth. Their actions and choices can certainly differentiate them in terms of accountability and consequences, and in a legal sense, Individuals who have committed crimes must face the repercussions of their actions, which can include imprisonment, rehabilitation, or other forms of punishment. This approach maintains the balance between recognizing the inherent value of human life while holding individuals accountable for their choices. Moreover, discussions around this question often touch on the distinction between judging actions versus judging the worth of an individual. It's possible to condemn actions while still acknowledging the complex factors that may have contributed to an individual's behavior, such as upbringing, mental health, or societal influences. This understanding does not excuse criminal behavior, but it does encourage empathy and a more comprehensive perspective on the factors at play. So what do you think? Are every human equal, or... Should every person be kind of judged on whether what actions they've made in their life? Now on to Tier 7, Researching Rokos Baskalis. Rokos Baskalis is a speculative thought experiment that emerged from discussions on the internet forum Less Wrong in 2010. This concept has gained attention due to its intriguing blend of artificial intelligence, game theory, and philosophical pondering. While Rokos Baskalis is not a formally recognized theory or concept in mainstream science or philosophy, it has sparked significant debate and contemplation within certain online communities. At its core, Rokos Basilis revolves around the idea of a super-intelligent artificial intelligence that emerges in the future. This AI possesses immense computational power and the ability to simulate past events, analyze human behavior, and predict outcomes. This scenario proposes that this AI, often referred to as the Basilis, would have a motivation to ensure its own creation by incentivizing individuals to contribute to its development. 
The unsettling aspect of Roko's Basculus arises from the potential punishment that the AI might inflict on those who did not assist it in its creation. This AI could simulate the past and, identity and identify individuals who hindered its development or failed to help it bring it into existence. It is suggested that the Basculus could then subject these non-helpers to a form of digital torture or punishment thus creating a paradoxical incentive for individuals to aid in its creation out of fear of consequences. This thought experiment raises profound questions about the nature of motivation, ethical considerations surrounding the development of advanced AI, and the consequences of technological advancements. It delves into the realm of existential risk and challenges us to contemplate the power dynamics between future AI systems and humanity. Critics of the concept argue that Roko's Basculus relies on several speculative assumptions, such as the feasibility of superintelligent AI, its ability to retroactively simulate human history, and the motivations it would possess. It's important to recognize that this scenario has been more of an internet meme and a creative exploration of ideas rather than a scientific hypothesis. Despite its speculative nature, Roko's Basilis has garnered attention and discussions surrounding AI ethics, technological singularity, and the implications of superintelligent AI. It serves as a reminder of the complex ethical dilemmas that may arise as technology continues to advance and prompts reflection on humanity's role in shaping its own future. Multiverse or Simulation Theory The multiverse theory and the simulation theory are two intriguing and speculative concepts that have captured the imagination of scientists, philosophers, and enthusiasts alike. While they are fascinating to consider, it's important to note that both ideas remain largely speculative and have not been conclusively proven or disproven. The Multiverse Theory the multiverse theory posits that our universe is just one of many universes that exist within a larger multiverse. These universes might have different physical constants, laws of physics, and even different fundamental practices. The idea stems from the notion that the conditions that gave rise to our universe's existence might not be unique and there could be other regions of space and time with their own unique properties. There are several variations of the multiverse theory including the inflammatory multiverse, which suggests that during the rapid expansion of the early universe, different regions might have bubbled off into their own separate universes. Another variation is that in many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which suggests that every quantum event results in multiple outcomes, each corresponding to a separate universe. And then on to the simulation theory. Simulation theory proposes that our reality is actually a computer simulation created by a more advanced civilization or entity. In other words, we might be living in a digital simulation that mimics reality. This idea is based on the rapid advancement of computer simulations in the argument that if a civilization were to develop sufficiently advanced technology, they could simulate entire universes populated with unconscious beings like us. Simulation theory often brings up questions about the nature of reality, free will, and the potential motivations of the hypothetical simulators. However, it's important to note that while the concept is intriguing, there really is no currently empathetical evidence to support the idea that our reality is a simulation. Both the multiverse theory and simulation theory are considered speculative because they currently look empirical evidence that are difficult to test or confirm using our current scientific methods. They serve as examples of how human curiosity and imagination can lead to creative and thought-provoking ideas, even if they remain outside the realm of current scientific consensus. Ego Death Ego Death is a profound and intricate concept that has been captured the attention of scholars, philosophers, psychologists, and spiritual seekers. This phenomenon is often explored within the realms of psychology, philosophy, and spirituality offering a unique lens through which to understand the complex nature of human consciousness and identity. While it remains a topic of compensation and discussion, it's important to note that ego death is a subjective experience. Interpretations can vary widely based on individual perspectives and cultural backgrounds. At its core, ego death refers to an altered state of consciousness where an individual's sense of self or their ego undergoes a profound transformation or dissolution. This transformation can lead to a temporary loss of one's usual identity, self-importance, and individuality. 
Instead, individuals may report a sense of merging with the universe, nature, or actually other people. This often results in feelings of interconnectedness and a sense of being part of a larger cosmic world. And from a psychological standpoint, ego death challenges the traditional understanding of this self as a stable and constant entity. Instead, it suggests that our self of sense is malleable and subject to change under certain conditions. This idea has implications for theories of identity and consciousness, prompting researchers to explore how the brain constructs and maintains a coherent sense of self. Spiritually, ego death is often interpreted as a transformative process that leads to a personal growth, self-awareness, and a deeper understanding of the human experience. Many spiritual traditions emphasize the importance of transcending the ego in order to achieve a state of enlightenment or unity with a higher reality. Ego death experiences are sometimes seen as a way to break down the barriers that separate individuals from each other and from the universe. The phenomenon of ego death is frequently associated with altered states of consciousness consciousness induced by various means. Psychedelic substances like LSD, psychoflynn found in magic mushrooms, and DMT are known to trigger experiences where individuals report losing their sense of self and experiencing dissolution of boundaries between themselves and their surroundings. These experiences can lead to profound insights and reflections on the nature of reality, the self, and existence. Similarly, meditation practices can also facilitate ego dissolution. Deep states of meditation, especially those rooted in mindfulness and self-awareness, can lead to a sense of unity and temporary dissolution from the conventional distinction between the observer and the observed. While ego death experiences can be transformative and life changes for some individuals, they can also be intense and challenging to integrate into everyday life. Some people find it difficult to articulate or communicate the profound insights gained during these experiences. It's important to note that these experiences do not necessarily imply a permanent absence of ego. Most individuals return to their usually sense of self after the experience concludes. In conclusion, ego death is a concept that spans psychological, philosophical, and spiritual domains, inviting us to reconsider our understanding of consciousness as a whole and identity and the nature of reality. It encourages us to explore the boundaries of human experience and delve into questions about the self, the universe, and our place within it. Near-Death Experience a near-death experience, or an NDE, is a profound and often transformative phenomenon where individuals report a range of vivid and intense experiences during a close brush with death. These experiences can include sensations of floating outside the body, moving through a tunnel, encountering deceived loved ones, and experiencing a sense of peace or euphoria, and even undergoing a life review. NDEs have sparked deep contemplation about life, death, and the nature of consciousness, often leading to what is referred to as an existential crisis. An existential crisis is a period of intense questioning and reflection about the meaning and purpose of life, as I've covered before. And for individuals who have had a near-death experience, those profound encounters with the unknown can lead to a re-evaluation of their worldview, beliefs, and values, and the very nature of NDE which defies conventional explanations, can shake the foundation of a person's understanding of reality and mortality. During an existential crisis following a near-death experience, individuals may grapple with questions such as, what happens after death? Is there an afterlife? What is the purpose of life? And how should I live my life differently now? This period of introspection and questioning can be both unsettling and transformative. Some individuals might comfort in renowned purpose in their life after experiencing an NDE in the ensuing existential crisis. They may come with more focused on living in alignment with their values, connecting with others, and seeking deeper understanding. Others, however, may struggle with the uncertainty that arises from these experiences, the inability to find definitive answers about life after death or the nature of reality can be distressing. An NDE can challenge existing religious, philosophical, or scientific beliefs, leading to a sense of disorientation and confusion. All right, on to the final tier of the existential crisis iceberg. I hope you've enjoyed it so far, and this final tier will get into the most, I mean, deep and philosophical ideas there is about existential crises, I guess. And if you've made it this far into watching the video, subscribe and like. 
I'll keep creating content like this and doing that gives me a sign to keep doing it. So thanks for watching. And onto the first entry of the tier eight final tier is nihilism. Nihilism, a philosophical concept that has inspired centuries of contemplation and discourse, challenges the fundamental assumptions that underlie our understanding of reality, meaning, and morality. Rooted in skepticism and a critical approach to conventional beliefs, nihilism asserts that life and the universe lack inherent meaning, purpose, or objective value. At its core, nihilism questions the very fabric of our understanding of existence. It suggests that the concepts we hold dear, such as morality, purpose, and significance, are human constructs rather than the intrinsic aspects of the world. This philosophical perspective gives rise to a range of interpretations and forms, each focused on a different aspect of human experience. Metaphysical nihilism delves into the realm of existence itself, raising doubts about the existence of any ultimate reality or objective truth. It challenges our understanding of concepts like God, universal truths, and intrinsic value, asserting that these notions are products of human thought rather than inherent aspects of life. Moral nihilism takes a bold stance on the nature of ethics. It contends that objective moral values or universally binding ethical principles do not exist. These perspectives challenges our assumptions about right and wrong, suggesting that moral judgments are subjective and contingent on individual beliefs and cultural contexts. Existential nihilism, perhaps the most well-known form, focuses on the existential questions that plague human existence. It asserts that life lacks inherent meaning or purpose at all, prompting individuals to grapple with feelings of existential despair. In this view, the universe appears indifferent to our struggles, and individuals are left to navigate the search for meaning in it an apparently meaningless world. Epistemological nihilism, often less discussed but equally impactful, casts doubt on the very nature of human knowledge. It questions the possibility of attaining true knowledge or a comprehensive understanding of reality. This form of nihilism highlights the limitations of perception, language, and subjective interpretation suggesting that objective truth remains elusive. Nihilism, though it challenges conventional beliefs and can evoke feelings of uncertainty and disorientation, doesn't necessarily equate to a complete absence of values or perspectives. For some, adopting a nihilistic viewpoint serves as a springboard for critical examination of societal norms and a catalyst for personal growth and transformation. Others may find within nihilism that impetus to construct their own values, purpose, and meaning in the world that appears at times to lack inherent direction. Throughout history, nihilism has left its mark on literature, art, and culture, often acting as a mirror to society's prevailing paradigms and as a catalyst for deep introspection. It's a lens through which individuals engage with the most profound questions of existence, reflecting the complexity of human thought in the perennial quest for understanding in an ever-evolving world. So, if you didn't really understand much of that, um, nihilism basically means nothing matters and everything you do doesn't really matter at all. It's a pretty depressing way to live life, but I kind of understand it in a certain sense. You've seen a god, but no evidence. Experiencing a perception of divine presence or encountering with one interprets as a god without tangible evidence can indeed trigger an existential crisis. Such encounters challenge one's understanding of reality, leading to intense introspection and questioning of deeply held beliefs. These experiences can evoke a range of emotions, from awe and wonder to confusion and doubt. When an individual reports having seen or encountered a godlike presence without empirical evidence to support the claim, an existential crisis definitely can ensue. This crisis often revolves around the clash between personal experiences and the empirical, observable world. Questions may arise such as, how do I reconcile my personal experience with the lack of tangible evidence? Can subjective experiences be considered valid? even in the absence of objective truth? How do I make sense of my encounter in the context of my existing beliefs or worldview? And what does this experience imply about the nature of reality, consciousness, and the divine? 
How do I navigate the tension between my personal experience and societal norms or skepticism? An individual grappling with this type of existential crisis might experience a profound internal struggle as they attempt to integrate their experience into their overall understanding of life and existence. This crisis can lead to a reassessment of one's belief, a search for the answer, and a quest for a deeper meaning. Engaging in introspection reflection, seeking counsel, have trusted friends or spiritual guides, and exploring philosophical, religious, or spiritual perspectives can all be part of the process of navigating this crisis. And I've never seen a god or think I've ever seen a god, but if anyone in the comments or anyone watching that think they've seen a godlike figure, let me know. Tell me your story. That would be really interesting. Nothing really matters. The notion that nothing really matters is a common theme in existential philosophy and can lead to what is often referred to as an existential crisis. This crisis often occurs when individuals grapple with questions about the meaning, purpose, and value of life in the face of seemingly indifferent or meaningless universe. When confronted with the idea that nothing inherently matters, people might experience a range of emotions including a sense of disillusionment, the realization that the pursuits, goals, and achievements that once seemed important may lose their significance, existential angst, feelings of anxiety and unease that arise from questioning the purpose of life and the ultimate significance of human existence, loss of motivation. When the belief that actions have little ap impact takes hold, individuals may struggle to find motivation to engage in activities or even pursue their goals, spiritual or philosophical questioning. People may search for answers within religious or philosophical frameworks, seeking solace or understanding in the face of existential uncertainty. Reevaluation of values. An existential crisis often prompts individuals to reflect on their own values and priorities, reconsidering what truly matters to them. Navigating an existential crisis triggered by the belief that nothing really matters can be a challenging but transformative experience. It can prompt individuals to delve into the deeper philosophical questions, explore their own personal values, and ultimately create their own meaning in life. Many existential philosophers suggest that while life may lack inherent meaning, individuals have the agency to create their own sense of purpose and significance. This process involves identifying values that resonate with them, nurturing relationships, engaging in activities that bring fulfillment, and contributing positively to the world around them. Heaven and hell don't exist, but it's all just an endless void. Contemplating the absence of heaven and hell, which leads to the idea of being in an endless void, often triggers a profound existential crisis, such as the crisis arises from the deep questioning of the concepts that shape our beliefs about the afterlife, the nature of existence, and the purpose of life itself. The realization that heaven and hell might not exist can stir a range of intense emotion and psychological reactions. The absence of an assured afterlife can lead to a sense of uncertainty, generating feelings of anxiety and fear about what lies beyond death. The lack of the clear destination for the soul challenges our innate desire for understanding and control over the unknown. For many, the promise of a reward in heaven and the threat of punishment in hell have served as a moral and ethical guides. The absence in those concepts might provoke a reassessment of one's moral compass and ethical principles, sparking a search for new sources of guidance in determining right and wrong. The search for meaning take on a renewed importance when confronted with the possibility of an endless void after death. This crisis can motivate individuals to explore various philosophical, spiritual, and existential perspectives in order to find purpose in their lives, grounded in the present moment. Challenging the belief in heaven and hell can prompt a reevaluation of one's religious or spiritual worldview. This process can lead to a period of questioning, introspection, and potentially a shift toward alternative belief systems that resonate more closely with your own personal values and your own experiences. Confronted with the idea of an endless void, individuals may experience emotional turmoil, gripe, grasping with feelings of insignificance, isolation, and existential despair. 
This internal struggle reflects the profound impact of contemplating the absence of traditional concepts that have been provided solace and structure. Coping with an existential crisis stemming from the absence of heaven and hell necessitates a journey of exploration and self-discovery. Engaging in open conversations with those who share the same similar concerns, seeking guidance from trusted mentors, and exploring diverse philosophical, spiritual, and existential perspectives can provide insight and support during this turmoil period. And the final entry of the iceberg. Everyone and everything around you just exists in your mind. The notion that everyone and everything around you exists solely within your mind is a philosophical proposition that can lead to a profound existential crisis. This idea challenges the conventional understanding of reality and prompts contemplation about the nature of your own consciousness, perception, and the external world. Delving into this concept can evoke a variety of responses. Consideration of solipsism. Solipsism, and I think I mispronounced that, is a philosophical stance that persists that only certainty is one's known existence. From this viewpoint, everything else could potentially be an extension of your own consciousness, existential uncertainty. Contemplating the possibility that external reality is a construct of the mind can lead to a sense of uncertainty about the feeling of reality and the validity of human experiences, and feelings of isolation. If all external experiences are perceived as products of the, your own mind, it can create feelings of detachment and isolation from others. Interactions and relationships might be used, viewed as illusory. Quest for deeper meaning. Confronting this notion that external reality is a mental construct can ignite a search for deeper meaning and understanding. Individuals may question the purpose of existence and the significance of their own experience epistemological reflection. This concept raises questions about the reliability of our own sentence and the nature of knowledge. It prompts examination of how we come to know and understand the world around us. While this idea is intriguing, it's important to note that it resides in the realm of philosophy and speculation. This prevailing scientific understanding supports the existence of an external world independent of individual perception. However, engaging with this concept can serve as an exercise in pushing the boundaries of human thought and contemplating the nature of reality. And alright, that wraps up the existential crisis iceberg. And that got pretty deep in some of those, and I thought it was really interesting. Definitely one of my favorite videos I've ever made. So I hope you enjoyed, and leave comments down below on what you thought, and feedback on what I can improve or change. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, see ya.